Now, today, I want to preach on a simple subject called, Who Am I? Last Sunday, I was talking about what, what do, do I have? have? And today, I want to talk about who am I? <clears throat> All right? Ask your neighbor, who are you? Who, who are you? Who are you? You will not even ask your neighbor. <laughs> ask your neighbor, who are you? Who are you? <clears throat> now, some people, when you ask them, who are you? They say, I'm a banker. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I'm a single mother. I'm a bachelor. I'm a luo. I'm in IT. I'm taken. <laughs> I mean, truly speaking, a lot of people don't have an identity, isn't it? <clears throat> you ask somebody who they are, they tell you what they do, not who they really are. And so the question that I'm asking today is, who am I? Who am I in the house? Who am I in life? Who am I? Who am I? Who is this person? That you're seeing and one of the things you note is that people overcompensate because of how they feel because your identity is determined by so many things in life if you went through an abusive home if you went through a single mom's home if you went through so many things they tend to form an identity of who you are so you find nowadays People overcompensate with um, makeup. The, but the real person behind them is a, a crying baby, a weak person, someone who does not believe in themselves, somebody who doesn't love themselves. They have low self-esteem. People even nowadays wear glasses to hide. I've seen even people wearing sunglasses in the night. <laughs> sunglasses in a house in the night. Because people are hiding so many things and they, you see some people, they look happy. But they are hiding something. I saw a video recently of somebody was saying, check up on your friends often and there is this guy who comes to the game to ball uh, soccer games all the time he's the happiest of them all but he's the one who commits suicide so one of the greatest blessings of salvation is the blessing of finding your identity who you really are you are not what you do. Hey. You are not which family you come from. You are not the tribe you belong to. You hear somebody saying, so what is his name? They say his name is uh, so and so. Uh, maybe John. And they say, John who? Then they say, John Odwar. Oh, Nimjaluo. And people also cause you to be identified by your tribe. They identify you and then they say, ah, wajaluo wana kuanga hivi. I'm afraid of saying things. Oh, ni mkikuyu. Ay, wakikuyu ni waizi. I can talk about my tribe so that nobody will judge me. Amen. And you see that people judge us with their they have what we call um, stereotypes. They, they have stereotyped us. And you can easily take up that form and believe it and become that thing. But we come to Christ. 
Our salvation is not just going to heaven. Our salvation is also to bring us to a place where we know who we are. Now, when you're separated from God, you don't know who you are. You start hiding. Can I hear somebody say hiding? Genesis chapter 3. I'm going to read for you a scripture there. Uh, Genesis chapter 3. The Bible says, When Eve took the apple or the fruit, we don't know whether it is apple or fruit, which fruit, people just decided it is an apple. But when they, she ate the fruit, the Bible says, she convinced her husband to also eat the fruit. And immediately sin came into our lives. All right? right? What happened when sin came into our lives? Verse 8. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Am I sounding like myself or like a lady? Like yourself. It's not clear because I don't think, I don't like my sound at all. It's like I'm screaming. There's no bass to my sound. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, we have one of the, the best um, mixer. mixer actually it's, there's no mixer like that mixer it's digital. and it's digital so you need to pray can we pray for part two because sometimes <laughs> <laughs> during your quiet time remember him because i don't know all right the bible says when the cool evening breezes were blowing the man heard that the man heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. All right? So they hid from the Lord. When sin comes in, you start hiding. You start hiding from the Lord among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? And he replied, I had you walking in the garden. So I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. And the Lord asked him, who told you that you were naked? So, was it all before sin? Are you listening? All the clothes you are wearing today is as a result of sin. What role can go to an atembea? Akira da bla ibo la gote ara ah sasa. Nobody was feeling anything, but the moment sin came, a wall was built around them. A compensation effect was brought around them, and they started hiding. So you find that many of us, because we don't know who we are, we are always hiding. We are hiding under a smile. We are hiding under clothes. We are hiding under makeup. We are hiding under our strong face. A lot of these men you see, they look macho. They're the weakest men you have ever seen. Oh yes. What is the problem of that man? Is that they are hiding because sin has come into our lives. But Jesus Christ comes to redeem us and he begins to release to us who we really are so who am i so i'm going to try and reveal to you who you are and you must believe it do you understand even if you don't feel it you don't feel that that is who you are or you can't even marry the fact that you can be that person i want you to believe that that is who you are amen, amen. now the first thing that you should know you are, and this is if you have made that decision, is that you are born again. Mm. I am born again. Can I hear an amen? amen. Say after me, say I am born again. <clears throat> now, if you are not born again, you can't say I am born again. Because you have not accepted Christ in your personal as your personal savior. Now, if you have given your life to Jesus, it doesn't matter whether you feel born again or not. Who are you? You are born again. 
I am born again. I am a Christian who is born again. You can be a Christian by name or by birth, but you are not born again. But you can be, you can now move to the level of being born again. And that is who you become, born again. Can I hear an amen? So Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. Romans chapter 10 verse 9. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So you don't need to feel oosh. Shalalala. You don't even need to speak in tongues to be born again. You don't even need to know a scripture. All you need to do is to confess with your mouth, all right, that Jesus is Lord. All right? You don't even be, you, you don't even need to be a member of any church. You don't even need to be a, a, a member of any harvest group. You don't even need to be an usher. All you need to do is to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. So if you have done that, who are you? I am born again. John chapter 3, the Bible says in John chapter 3, this man called Nicodemus, all right, he came to Jesus and he asked him, uh, what shall, I mean, how can I, what do you, uh, Jesus, he asked him, uh, verse, verse uh, 1, verse 1, the Bible says, verse 1, there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee, all right? After dark, one evening, he came to speak with Jesus, all right? Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us your miraculous signs or are evidence that God is with you. Then verse 3, quickly, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless... Are you listening to me? You are born again. You cannot see the kingdom of God. So if you are seated in this congregation right now and you die and you have never given your life to Christ, you have never believed in your heart that Jesus is Lord and confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then it doesn't matter whether you died in the church or in a harvest group. Or in a prayer meeting, you are not going to see the Lord at all. You are not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven has this route. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And then he asked him, all right, what do you mean? This is what Nicodemus said. What do you mean? He exclaimed, how can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Then verse 5, Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. Verse, verse 6, it continues to say, humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life life can i hear an amen from somebody so he said to him don't be surprised don't be surprised verse 6 so don't be surprised when i say you must be born again uh-huh verse 8 the wind blows wherever it wants just as you can hear the wind but you can't tell where it's coming from where it is going you uh uh, uh where it is where it comes from or where it is going so you can't explain how people are born of the spirit so it's a supernatural things 
So how are these things possible? Nicodemus asked. Continue. Jesus replied, you are respected. Da, 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 da. Uh -huh. Verse 11. Continue, continue. I assure you, we, t we tell you what we know and have seen and yet won't believe our testimony. Anyway, it continues all the way to verse 16 where it says that, that uh, uh, verse 16, verse 16. It says, for God so loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son that everyone who believes, come on somebody, everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So if you have believed in Christ and you have confessed with your mouth, then who are you? I am born again. Repeat that after me. Say, I am born again. That is your first identity. I am born again. Not I am Kikuyu. Not I am Luo. Not I am Luya. Not I am 20 years old. Not I am a banker. Not I am a businessman. Not I am in the finance industry. No. I am born again. Number two. What is your identity? What is your identity? I am a new creature. Number two is I am a new creature. And I want you to believe it. I don't know. I know you don't feel new. You don't feel new, isn't it? You feel the, you feel yuck. You even feel some parts of your body's are, body is paining, isn't it? Ay, ay, mugongo. Oh, tumbo. You don't feel like a new creature. But I want to assure you that once you are born again, you are a new creature. And how do I know that? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. The Bible says, oh my God, I love this word. Look at this, my friends. Give me new King James Version. All right. The Bible says, therefore, I wish we can all read together. Somebody say, therefore. Uh huh. Continue. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new. I can't hear you guys. He is a new. He's a new creation. And what has happened to this guy? Old things have passed away. And what has happened? Behold, all things have become new. You are a prostitute before. Now that you have received Christ, you are a new creation. You are a new creature. You still feel something. But now that you are in Christ... You are a new creation. People still think that you are the same old person, but that you are in Christ. You are a new creation. That is your identity, my brothers and sisters. I want you to look at your neighbor who judges you by how you used to be and tell them, I'm not that guy anymore. I'm a new creation. Today, you can even meet some people that used to know you. All right? Somebody should talk to these guys who are walking, please. Tell them to, they can go now, but tell them it's not allowed. All right? Now you see now this thing. If any man, please don't walk out when I'm preaching. Please, I beg you. Yes. All right? Buenas fue. Buenas fue, Tena. Ambia jirani yako bwana asifiwe usiamuke usitembe na usilale Bwana asifiwe sana Oh yes it's not allowed please it's not a good sign Now you are a new creature people used to know you you used to smoke with them Isn't it You used to hang out and watch soccer with them and drink with them But now that you are born again the Bible says that you have become a new creature. Where's your journey, Wamandom Tena? Eh? Where 
wewe sio shiro dawa yao tena and you know what you used to do can be so persistent it doesn't one of these days i'm going to teach you what really happens when you get saved and i'm going to show you areas in your life that don't get saved would you like to see those things pesa yenyo ijafika hapo i'm going to show you what areas because some of you you even think that you are not born again because of mistakes that you have made but that does not define your salvation am i talking to somebody in the house you are not the old old self you used to be you might sleep and fall but that does not define you now what defines you is this word if any man be in christ Ah uh, I don't think I'm in the right church today. If any man be in Christ, that man is a new creature, a new creation. Oh yes, that is why wote abaki hapo kijaji watu. Waliwashaokoka bana. They are new creature. That is why I can't speak the way I used to speak. I can't go where I used to go. I can't have the people I used to have. I am now a new creature and I must accept it and change. Who am I? I am a new creature. I I come today to speak against that devil that has been speaking to you. You know there is a voice that speaks to you and tells you you are nothing. And tells you you are wewe unajifanya ngomeokoka au jifanyi no if you have believed in your heart and you have confessed with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and then that he rose from the dead the bible says you are born again and if i am born again the bible says i am a new creature kala mahasataya So what affects my family has no power to affect me. What I used to do has no effect and no bearing on my today. Why? I am a new creature. And I'm speaking to somebody here. You need to forgive yourself. You need to let go of your past because now you are a new creature touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor i'm a new creature oh yes some of you mnaniangalia do you become a zombie au amini nasemai you are trying to reason but the bible says the things of the spirit are like the wind they are like the wind you can't understand them so you just need all you need to do my brothers and sisters is believe I am born again. Eh? There is no feeling for there is no I feel born again. Akunanga feeling ya born again. Unajua kuna watu wana ukiwaona hata unaona hata they don't just feel. They look born again. Hata hakuna look. It's a belief that you must believe. I am born again and then I am a new creature. Number three, another thing that is your identity. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor I have an identity, my friend. Huh? Oh, yes. Is it making sense? Oh, a lot of sense. You are a new creature. Oh, yes. You are a new creature. Yes. You are a new creature. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> mweti mweti wa 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 mweti mweti wa 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 veve ni kwa tafuta ile nyingine ile tangwaje mogoka but you are, you came and you get you walked here you gave your life to Christ actually even four months later ulijipata unakula mogoka 
Mnaza mwana jua niliokoka. Lakini kitu imenilemea. Ukisha tema unakumbuka wa wacha nijaribu tena. The devil can easily tell you you are backslidden, you are no longer born again, you are no longer a child of God, but that's not true. You are just your flesh and your spirit are at war. Amen. And your spirit must defeat your flesh. Until one day you look at mugoko uyambie nye, 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 bu, bu. I'll never touch you. And it never means anything to you. But that does not mean that you are mweti wa mugoka. You are born again and you are a new creature. Number three. Yeah. I am complete. Another identity that belongs to you is I am complete. Mimi ni mzima. Sindiyo kwa Kiswahili. Mimi ni mkamilifu. Yeah, yeah, that's the word. The word. Mzima mzima. Iyo ni kwenye. Mimi ni mkamilifu. Sio mzima mzima. Hmm? Somebody say I am complete. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 to 10. Colossians. Ah, this is beautiful man. For in him dwells all the fullness of the God head bodily. All right? And you are complete in him. <laughs> Who is the head of all principality and power? You, Kamo Meokoka, the Bible says you are complete in him. That, that should bring freedom to you. It should bring the freedom that you actually don't need anybody to complete you. You don't need anything to complete you. In Christ, I am complete. Amen. I would like you to repeat after me and say, In Christ, I am complete. And the Bible says, And you are complete in him. So who are you? I am a man who has been completed by God. In him, I am complete. So as a woman, I don't need to be in the house crying and saying, I need a man to complete me. <laughs> My better half. You don't have, you, the Bible says you are complete in him. Mm, mm. I don't need Pastor Mercy to complete me. I am complete. And that is the problem we have in marriages today. Uh -huh. Two incomplete people in their minds. They think that they need the other person to complete them. And the other person does not meet your need. All right? So you become unsatisfied or dissatisfied. And immediately there begin to be a huge, huge, huge gap or divide between the two of you. But if you are complete in Christ and the other person is complete in Christ, it becomes a beautiful thing. I want you to repeat after me. Say, I am complete. By the way, you don't even need money to complete you. That is why a lot of people, they gather money, they have a lot of money, but they are so unhappy. Because money doesn't complete you. Huh? Some of you, you, need, you think, I need a holiday. When you go for holiday, you get more tired. And broke. Yeah, you thought, I need to be on holiday. I, I think I need a holiday. When you go for holiday, you begin to realize, no, that doesn't complete me. Some of you feel, oh, I need sex. The more you have it, the more you are not complete. The more you are becoming empty. Some of you say, I need alcohol. The more you drink it and drink it, the more you become empty and empty and empty. So, these external things don't complete us. What completes me is my relationship in Christ. And the Bible says you are complete in him. That is why if you leave me and Jesus, I have great company. 
I can be there, I can be happy, I can be excited. I don't need my wife to be happy. I don't need my children to be happy. All I need is Christ. Somebody say, I need Jesus. I want you to say it like you believe it. Say, I need Jesus. Say, I am complete when I'm in Christ Jesus. Amen. Number, the next one is number what? Number four, I am delivered. I'm telling you, I'm preaching on the subject, who am I? I am delivered. I've met people coming to me and saying, Pastor, deliver me. Pastor, deliver me. I'm like, dude, I mean, how can I just say, okay, I'm delivering you. Demons. This is somebody who believes with all their heart that demons are resident in them. But you know, I'm in Christ. Demons cannot come and live in me. Jesus and Satan cannot be in the same house. One of them has to leave. So if you have opened a door for demons, then you need deliverance. But if you are a child of God, you have opened your door to Christ, there is no way Satan can come and live there. Nikama muizi anajua. GSU wameja kwa hiyo nyumba wako na magan alafu anakamtu kuiba it's not possible isn't it I mean even the fact that the house is full of light you find that it is a deterrent to a thief it's the same thing my brothers and sisters if Christ is in you then you don't need deliverance you are already delivered You don't need Johanna. You'll get it when you get home. <laughs> hey, people are looking for deliverance. When you are a child of God, a witch doctor has no power over you. Why? Watch and you are Because some of you, Munao Gopam Chawi. You are a new creature. You are born again. You are complete. And you are delivered. Somebody needs to shout a better amen. That's who you are. Sit down, sit down. You're blocking some governors. Are you listening to me, my brothers and sisters? Somebody say, I am delivered. Oh, yes. Get my, get my iPad, please. I'm not bound. Some of you keep saying, oh, kuna mtu alikuja, antiangu, akaua kuku, akamwaga damu, akafanya sijui nini, sasa kwetu pasta tumeshikwa. Mmeshikwa na nani, bana? Nani kakushita? Ameshika pesa zetu. Basi muambia ziachilie. Because you have power. You can rise up in the morning. And you can say in the name of Jesus. Any witch doctor. That has performed kululu for us. I bind you in the name of Jesus. You have the power to bind them. You don't have to go to that jo any bishop. Johanna. Yeah. Mutume Johanna and begin to ask for deliverance ati kuna kitu imewekwa kwa tumbo Hey somebody needs to shout I am delivered Look for three people and tell them we are delivered Tell them we are delivered Yes Sit down I give you a scripture Oh, I'm teaching you. Yeah. And when I teach you like this, you're not going to be a slave of some prophet. I need somebody to tell me my name. I need somebody to tell me what is disturbing our family. I don't need that. 
I don't need, they are there and God has raised some of them, but I don't need that. I don't need to be controlled by somebody to be telling me, oh, I can see it is because, I can see it is because the Bible teaches me I am delivered. Once I become a child of God, I am delivered. And by the way, Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. I am complete. I am delivered. Yeah. Unatembea kila saa tu ukisema mimi na unanga kuna kitu inanifuata. Mimi na unanga kuna kitu inanifuata. Mimi kaa kuna kitu inanifuata ni malaika. Na baraka. Na mapesa. Hey. You are delivered. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Anyway, let's read Colossians chapter 1. My time is even up. Mm. Hey. I'm delivered. Mashetani Z. The Bible says he has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us, conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Change the version, change the version. Let's see another version. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness. I am rescued from the kingdom of darkness. And I have been transferred eh? us into the kingdom of his dear son. I am transferred. It's already done. My life before born again, I was full of demons. Now that I'm born again, I've been transferred. And that is why as a Christian, if you want to keep your deliverance, you have to know which doors you should not open. Because there are doors that transfer you back to where you used to be. That transfer you back to the kingdom of darkness. Oh yes. That is why you are told, don't do this, don't do this. It's to try and stop you from allowing darkness back into your life. Let me change the version. Change. Quickly, another one, another version. There are many versions. Choose. For he has rescued us. That looks the same. Look, an look for another one. TPT or something. Ah, that's what I'm going to more difficult. Anyway, number one is what? Okay, let's read it from the Message Bible. God rescued us from dead end alleys and dark dungeons he set us up in the kingdom of the son he loves so much so i need you to confess from the top of your voice say i am delivered, I'm delivered. yes i'm delivered from cancer oh yes say it i'm delivered from cancer i'm delivered from witchcraft you should be so charged up with the presence of God, that muchawi ya kita jina yako, anaanguka. Yes. Amen. Oh, yes. Eh? Yes. Ati tunataka uturoge eko wiyu msichana wetu. <laughs> Aki ita jina yako, nyamboke, anakuwa mwenda wazimu. That shall be your portion from today. <laughs> the Bible says you shall not suffer a witch to live. Oh yes, I am delivered. Don't walk here with fear and mutu askei kuja kuniambi hapa ati nimerogwa pasta. Nani kakuroga? Nita. Sijui nda kufanya nini lakini. Sioni niki kuskiliza. Oh yes. Ati pasta. Wame nifunga. Somebody say I'm born again. Say I am born again. Say I am a new creature. 
Say, I am complete and I am delivered. The next one is, I am free. Who am I? I am free. By the way, Christianity is not to make your life miserable. It's not to make you look like you are about to die or collapse or... Huh? I am a free man. The Bible says, uh, um, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. There is liberty in the presence of God. Oh yes, some of you are tamwezi katika. Lakini ukienda oangala. Uko uko. Utungulu, tungulu, tungulu. Ebu weka oangala. Suji kama. Unajua oangala. Tingli, tingli, tingli. Something, something. Unapata tu kamzeka kwa hii charge. Na kitambi. Tungulu, tungulu, tungulu. But kwa church Ndiyo ya Keni ndiyo Akisha sema Amesema Baba Amesema ndiyo Nani ya katae Muzee Lakini Ohangala Unatuambaga koti Hey But you see The freedom you have received is for Church In the house of the Lord In righteousness In holiness And in serving God You can be a free man Christianity is not that thing that you see With these people with long faces Speaking in a language that is not understandable. Shalom. Maranada. Ukim salimia na kwambia shalom my brother. Ada kabla ufikirie shalom ni nini? Akiondoko unanza kugoogle shalom. What is shalom? That is not Christianity. You are lifted. Shalom Shabak. Hata mimi mwenyewe sijui Shabak ni and I'm a pastor. Na wewe sasa? Eh? Mombasa umevaa suti. Unajua mtu ambaye ameokoka lazima akae kama ameokoka. Bwana aziviwe. I mean kama uko Mombasa na wife yako, I mean your wife must wear something that makes you feel I'm in Mombasa. That does not mean you are not born again. What are you talking about? I am free. Somebody shout, I am free. Let me give you a scripture. All right. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Look at this. Christianity is. Ati, ati. Kwanini wanabanga trouser? Iyo siyo wakovu. Iyo ni shida ni wewe. Wende wakona shida. Akili yako ni chafu. Osha akili yako. Ya. Ati kwa nini wanawake wanavaa trouser? Ya. 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 Wewe ndio unafikiria vibaya. Osha akili yako. Fagia akili yako. Fagia kwa hako. Kwa nini ya vai kitamba kwa kichwa? Eh. Ata ule anakufanyanga meno yako yanguke. Haku wangi na kitamba. Anyway, New King James Version, please. Let me preach. Hacha ni hachana na maneno mingi. The Bible says, Hey, brother, you're too slow. New King James. Oh my God. All right. Okay, let's read what is there. Ah. (laughs) 
Stand fast therefore in the liberty. Can, I need everybody to read, please. Look at the scripture, please. Because the word of God is our standard. The word of God is our standard. And I want you to remember these scriptures. What does it say? Stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. I am free. I am free from the yokes of bondage. Amen. I am free from the yokes of bondage. I am free from poverty. I am free from sadness. I am free from sin. I am free. Somebody needs to say, I am free. Once you keep saying, I'm struggling with this sin, I'm struggling with this sin, it means you have not accepted the freedom that comes from God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by, by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Look, give me TBT if you have it. I don't know whether we really have it. All right, let me be clear. The anointed one has set us free. I think you should read with me, please. Can you read? One, two, three, the Bible says, let us, let me be clear. The anointed, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, stop there. I am completely and wonderfully free so alafu we must always cherish and stubbornly oh you guys you guys you guys you are not reading you are not reading by the way so man ndio wachange kuwa mjinga wa scriptures ndio wache kusumbuliwa na watu wanajua haujui because that's the problem. Christianity today is people who don't know. They are right. They don't know who they are in Christ. They don't know what salvation means. But look at this. The Bible says we must always cherish this truth. And stubbornly refuse to go back into the bondage of our past. The last one, the second last one, I am blessed. I'm talking about your identity in Christ. Hmm? I am blessed. Pastor, I am blessed. Laana yuko Na kama umefanya ujinga utalaaniwa Lakini kama wewe Umeokoka You have given your life to Christ And you are doing the right things That God has called us to do You can confidently say I am blessed Say I am blessed, I am blessed. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 I am blessed I'm not a banker. I'm not a single mom. I am blessed. That's who I am. I am a blessed person. Oh, yes. Somebody needs to put their right hand on your head and say, I am a blessed man. By the way, if you make this your daily affirmation, you'll be surprised. Blessings will start flowing in your life. If you keep saying, oh, I'm in trouble. Oh, that is what you attract in your life. Okay, the Bible says, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, not denied us, not cast us. Oh, you people, are you with me? This side, are you, are you in the church? What does the Bible say? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every 
spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Where, where, where? In Christ. Uh, because I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. Nimondani yake Yesu ndani yangu Is that what it says? Yes. Uh-huh. Walio pa Uh-huh. Nikon that part. Ame nanzi anga hapo mali unaanzia? Ah. Uwezi anzi hapo mali nimeanzia? Never. Aibu anzi hapo. Nimon Nimondani yake Yesu ndani yangu Tena Nimondani yake Yesu ndani yangu hey. Unakuanga na sauti Sijui ukizaa nitafanya nini <laughs> Au kijifungua au kijifungua pole <laughs> Nimondani yake Yesu ndani yangu Yeah those who are in Christ are blessed That is why we can say Walio upande wangu Ndio wengi kuliko maadui Siwezi shindwa Siwezi zimia Walio Walio upande wangu Ndio wengi kuliko maadui Siwezi shindwa Siwezi zimia Why? Nimondo Nimondo I don't carry poverty. I don't carry curses. I don't carry uselessness. I carry Jesus. And when I carry Jesus, I am blessed. So it is Christ in you. The hope of glory. So you can take money from me. But don't take Christ from me. Because in Christ I am born again. In Christ I am complete. In Christ I am delivered. In Christ I am free. In Christ I am blessed. So don't laugh at me because I'm born again. You are the one losing if you are not born again. Because all these things are found in Christ. Why don't you give Jesus a better shout of praise? Sit down. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Glory to God. I'm about to finish. I'm about to finish now. All right. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. I'm blessed. You need to say it like an American. Say, I'm blessed. Not blessed. Yours, your, yours, your American. Say, I am blessed. I'm blessed, my brother. Glory to God. When somebody calls you and says, How are you? What are you going to say? I am blessed. Yes. You can even add something on it and say, I am blessed and highly favored. Come on. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, yeah. Glory to God. You see, if I go to America, I can preach there too. Because I can say, you are blessed. I'm too blessed. I'm too blessed the devil is scared when I wake up in the morning. Uh, <laughs> Kaya Bahadosha. 
You know, the reason why you're not excited is because you don't know what the blessing can do. But the Bible says, it is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. That is why a blessing is so important. Am I talking to somebody here today? Blessing is so important because it is the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and adds no sorrow with it. Yeah, that is why you're not excited. Because you don't understand the importance of the blessing. Glory to God. I want you to look for five people who are excited as you are and tell them in Christ, in Christ, I have all blessings in the spiritual realms and I pull them down now. Oh yes. I am blessed. Oh my God. Look for somebody and tell them I am blessed. Uh, yeah. I am blessed in the morning. I'm blessed in the evening. In the new time, uh, 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 uh. blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning, blessed in the new time, blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Let's read the second scripture. Second Peter. Second Peter. Somebody needs to say, I am blessed. If you have been feeling, you understand me, like you are carrying on your shoulders a heaviness on your shoulder, I want you to know you need to remove it by saying, I am blessed. I hope he's in the person. I am blessed. Somebody say, I am blessed. All the burdens that you are carrying that are making your life difficult and heavy. Eh? You need to know that if you accept who you are in Christ as a blessed person, that burden will be lighter. Yes. Christianity is beautiful. Oh yes. You are missing out. So the Bible says, first, second Peter, chapter 1, verse 3. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge. You see, you must believe it. You must believe it. That God has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. I pity people who don't have a relationship with Christ. They are missing out big time. Yes. Christ has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. I don't know how the TPT puts it. TPT. He says everything we could ever need for life. Me, I believe in these things. I don't know about you, but I believe in these things. That everything killer kitu that I could ever need for life and, com and complete devotion to God has already been deposited in us by his divine power. It is already residing in you. Aikuji Elisha Akuja. When Christ came into your life, all these things came with him. Your work is to know it. Know it. And what is it that I need for life and godliness? I need money. I need a home. I need a good family and a peaceful family. I need children. I need all these things that I need for life and godliness. 
I need, I need them. They are, the Bible says they are in me. Yes. It's not a lot of money you need in the bank. No. You need a personal relationship with Jesus. That when some life needs are placed on you, what has already been deposited in you supplies those things. I am blessed. Yeah. Look, the Bible says, for all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him. The, the, the idea is to know him, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, that I may know him. A lot of us, we come to church, but we don't know him. We don't even have a desire to know him. And that is why we are languishing in poverty, languishing in unhappiness, languishing in marriages that are unhappy, languishing in things that are not supposed to be found in our lives. Yes. The Bible says, knowing him who has called us by name and he has invited us to come to him through a glorious manifestation of his goodness so write down the last three is I am an heir I'm not going to explain those things I'm an heir Galatians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7 the Bible says we are no more servants but sons and if I am a son I'm an heir if I'm a son I'm an heir. Therefore, you are no longer slave but a son. If a son, then you are an heir of God. <laughs> through Christ. Through Christ. Everything is through Christ. Through Christ. Through Christ. Yeah. So Jesus is the ultimate. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, you are already a son of God. And therefore, you are an heir. You have an inheritance in God. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And if our God is a rich, rich God. And if our father is a rich, rich father. And I'm an heir. Eh? Why have I not inherited some things? Because if he, a cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. Gold and silver belong to him. I mean even a pinch of gold. See, I should get it. Yeah, because I'm an heir. I saw a video um, of a guy who had an earring with a red diamond. Round. He had an earring. So he had gone to check on some watches. And the guy who was with him said, can I see your earring? And the guy removed a man. He removed his earring. And the guy told him, do you know the worth of this earring? And he said, what? He told him, I have somebody ready to buy a square earring of this red diamond, which is rare, for five million dollars. Yours is round. It would cost six million dollars. He said, what? Like I've been walking with it and I didn't know I was wearing five, five to six million dollars. And he said, I'm, after here, I'm going to insure it. And he was asked, how much did you buy it? Did you buy it half of it? He said, no. Quarter of it? No. He said, less, far less than half a million dollars when I bought it. I, he didn't know that he was having a valuable thing. Right? Something small like this. Christ is valuable. If God is my father and I'm an heir, I must get some little bit of oh yes if you are outside and it is raining I am for sure a drop will fall on you let this year be a year of faith where a little bit of God falls on us oh your amen is not even strong enough shout a better amen, amen. tell your neighbor neighbor amen. I'm an heir of the kingdom Amen. Amen. And then
the second last one is I am a king. Hiyo hata najua mtaamini but wacha tu niwaambie. I am a king. Okay? Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. I am a king. So if you are a lady you can say I'm a queen or I'm a king, it doesn't matter. I don't know. Let's start verse 5. My time is far gone. I'm sorry I got excited. And from but anyway, sasa the next time nawaona ni kama yuko tu to Sunday. Si hata nyinyi mkae na mimi kidogo. And from Jesus Christ. You see, I don't I don't like the way you relate with me. Unataka tu kuenda. Ah, unataka tu kuenda. Ah, hata mimi hata mimi sasa. Do your your relationship yetu I I let it shangwe. Hmm? You should be wanting to be here with me. Yeah, may change. Anyway, to some Bible. The Bible says, I'm from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the, over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Ebu Sema Kwanza, my sins have been washed. In his own blood. Then verse 6. And has made us kings. Has done what? Has made us kings. And priests to his God and Father. To him be glory, dominion. Forever and ever. I have been made a king. That's the only thing. But as for me, I'm going to follow this scripture. He says, and has made us kings. When you leave this church, walk like a king. Talk like a king. Think like a king. You see that I mean aziko mingi. Because you know how to behave like a pauper. You know how to behave like a borrower. Kings don't borrow. Kings don't know the cost of things even. Yes. When they feel like eating filet. They eat it. When they feel like eating red snapper. They eat it. When they feel like eating grass cutter. They eat, do you know grass cutter? By the way, it's a, it, that... You know, you guys laugh, but grass cutter is a food for the rich in, in West Africa. Yeah. One time I ate grass cutter, but I had not, I had not thought about, anyway, my time is gone. God has made us what? Kings. That's why I like watching these ancient movies where there are kings and whatever. When they are eating, they don't eat half a pork. The whole pork, the whole, the whole pig is on the table. It's called what? A poker. The whole pig. Akina kwambia, siku moja, tutakuwa na bash. Tutakelea pig mzima. You just come with a fork and you just remove the piece you want. Kak. Yeah. Kutakuwa na kingombe tu kina piga masama. Haga. You are like a popa. That shall not be your portion. Say, I am a king. And finally, my brothers and sisters, I am the righteousness of God. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. I am the righteousness of God. <coughs> Excuse me. Kings wana kwaaga. King akikoa muna sema, we excuse you. <laughs> ah, somebody say I'm the righteousness of God. You know, some of you, you can't worship God because of what you did. 
because you feel you are dirty and you are unrighteous. But the Bible actually teaches me that my self-righteousness is like a filthy rag before God. The righteousness I have is not my own. It is from the Lord. So for he made, for he made him who knew no sin to be seen for us that we may become the righteousness of God in him. Everything is in Christ. Everything is in Christ. Everything is in Christ. So when somebody stretches their finger to judge you or to condemn you, tell them I'm the righteousness of God. I don't have my personal righteousness. It doesn't mean that you live your life anyhow. I'm trying to say that no matter what you do, you can never be righteous enough. So what do we do? We clothe ourselves with the righteousness of God. So what do we become? We become the righteousness of God. So when God is looking at you, he's not looking at you with the mistakes you did. He's seeing you as his righteousness. That is why you can approach his throne with confidence. You can come into the, bold, into the kingdom of God and into the throne of God with boldness that you may obtain mercy and have fine grace. You, might, you come with boldness, not because you are clean, but because you are the righteousness of God. I can assure you, so many of you, you can't serve in the church because of your guilt. You can't even give because of your guilt. You can't even fellowship in a small group because of your guilt. You are always afraid people will judge me. People will know who I really am. I am here to tell you, you are the righteousness of God. Now, Sky Jalishwan, our two own stories, our two. Our two, they are also overcompensating. They are overcompensating their own challenge. You see, a lot of times when people are judging someone, they feel bad about themselves. So they want to, to feel good about themselves by making someone else feel and look bad. So true Christianity is the Christianity that understands I have no personal righteousness. I am the righteousness of God. Ladies and gentlemen, how many points did I give you today? Nine. Number one. I can't hear you. Number two. I am a new creature. Number three. I am complete. Number four. I am delivered. Say that strongly because I'm going to chida. Uh huh. I am free. I am blessed. I'm an heir, not hair. I'm an heir. H is silent. So can you repeat after me? Say, I'm an heir. And then number. Eight. I am a king. Somebody say I am a king. Say as a king, all good things will be in my house. And then finally, I am the righteousness of God. Glory to God. Clap your hands and give him praise. And give him glory. Oh, I don't like, is, it, uh, is that how you're going to clap for Jesus? My God, have you been blessed? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Please stand up on your feet. Every eye closed, every head bowed. If you are here, you have never received Christ as your personal savior. You have never surrendered your life to God. I want you to shoot your hand up because I want to pray for you. You know, and 
usher you into the kingdom of God. And all these things that I'm talking about, they will begin to be your portion. So if you're here, you're saying, Pastor, I was invited. Or probably I used to be born again. I backslid. I left the Lord. Now I want to come back because it's actually for my good. We are not going to embarrass you. We are going to be excited for you. I want you to lift up your right hand high. I'm going to pray for you when I see it. Thank you for that hand. You're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus. Come to me, come to me. I want to pray for you. Come to me. I want to pray for you. You're saying, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Come, come, come. Come boldly. Bring them, Madam, Anne, Alice, please help them. Stand with them there. Oh, yes, they're coming. They're coming. I don't know why you're not clapping. Oh, come, come. I'm waiting. Clap for them. They're coming. You're saying, I want to be a new creature. I'm waiting for the last person to come. You're there. You're saying, some, even something is telling you go, but you're afraid. You think that, oh, I can't go before all these people. I want you to shoot out of your seat and come for the final call. God is calling you. God is calling you. Yes. In Christ are all these blessings. I'm giving you a final call. There's somebody, somebody somewhere. You're struggling in your spirit. Should I go? Should I stay? Should I go? Should I stay? I'm giving you a final call. Somebody. As we sing this song, just walk to me. I'm going to pray for you. I want to pray for these loved ones. One more time. Anyone? Please, can you clap for them as they come? I think they will. Anyone? Come, come, come. All right. Let's pray for these ones. We, the, Satan is losing one, two, three, four, five souls. Congratulations. I'm going to pray for you. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Congregation, will you help them pray this prayer? Close your eyes and repeat this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for dying for me. For dying for me. Today. Today. I ask you. I ask you to wash me. To wash me with your precious blood. With your precious blood. Forgive me. Forgive me of all my sins. Of all my sins. Today. Today. I confess with my mouth. I confess with my and I believe in my heart. And I believe in my heart that you are Jesus you are, you Jesus. are the Lord you, are the Lord. you, died, you died and you rose again, and you rose again. Today, today come and be, come and be the, Lord of my life. the Lord of my life from today, from today I, am born again. I am born again I am a child of God I am a, child of God. I am a new creature I am, a new creature. I am complete I am, I am delivered I now I want you to tell the devil, 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 I will not serve you. I will not serve you. My life, my life belongs to Jesus. Belongs to Jesus. From now on, from now on, I am born again. I am born again. Amen. Amen. Why don't you celebrate these five amazing souls? Oh, I can't hear you. I can't hear you.